What's up, Psychedelic Investors? My name's James, and you're watching The Psychedelic Investor, your number one news source for psychedelic stocks. Today we're going to be doing a little bit of a roundup, taking a look at some of the biggest news stories over the past week or two that impact the major players in the psychedelic medicines field. We're going to be looking at the Red Light Holland merger to create a new company. We're going to be looking at the Numinous Wellness uplisting. And of course, we got some mind med news for you and so much more. So make sure you stick around to the end to hear all the good stuff. And tomorrow, we're going to be covering some of the updates that happened to some of the smaller cap companies in the field. So we have some Midison updates. We've got some Entheon updates and, of course, small pharma updates. So if you enjoy these type of episodes and you want to see more, Make sure you support the channel with your like and subscribe. And while you're at it, hit that notifications bell to make sure you don't miss any episodes going forward. Enjoy the episode. We're going to start off with a tie life sciences, which is, of course, ticker symbol ATAI, a tie on the NASDAQ exchange. And the news that we're covering today is, of course, the fact that a tie finally got put on to the NASDAQ exchange. They finally had their IPO. So when it IPO'd, it was technically at $15, but by the time us retail investors finally got the chance to put our money in, it had unfortunately risen all the way up to $21.68, which really sucks for those of us that tried to get in or wanted to get in at $15. It did dip a little bit by the end of the day to $19.45 by close, and this would give a tie about a market cap of an earth-shattering $2.68 billion, which is more than double mine meds. So we did do a full episode on Atai's IPO and a deep dive into the company, so I won't go into too many details here, but I will link that episode at the end of this one, so definitely check it out. In that episode, you can learn everything you need to know about Atai before deciding whether or not you want to put your money into that company. The one thing I do want to talk about in this episode is, did I end up buying any Atai? Well, I tried to. Unfortunately, I had a little bit of an issue with my account. I couldn't transfer money from my Canadian account to American account. It doesn't really matter. But the long story short is I wasn't able to buy on IPO day. But that doesn't really matter. On Monday, I will put in some of my MindMed profits into a tie, which will expand my psychedelic medicines portfolio to include Mind Medicine, Compass Pathways, Psych, which is the psychedelic medicines uh, ETF run by Horizons, and now, of course, a tie Life Sciences. So again, make sure you check out that episode we did on a tie. And let me know down in the comments if you guys ended up buying some Atai, if you're waiting but you do intend to eventually buy some, or if you're never going to buy the company, full stop. Again, let me know down in the comments section. Next up, we're going to talk about Red Light Holland, ticker symbol TRUFF, TRUFF on the OTC market, and TRIP on the CSE. And this might actually be the last time I ever call it Red Light Holland, and that is because the company has announced that they are merging with a cannabis company called Creso Pharma to create the hybrid lab. So this new company is expected to have a market cap of $347 million Canadian with a cash balance of $45 million bucks in the bank. Hybrid Lab will keep the Red Light Holland ticker symbols, so it will still be TRIP on the CSE and TRUFF on the OTC. This new company will continue to have as its main focus uh, expanding recreational sales, both of psilocybin mushrooms and now cannabis products, where they are legal of course. They will also work on some applied sciences when it comes to psychedelics and be in the discovery of new compounds game. The goal here is to become ever more vertically integrated, from growing the mushrooms, to harvesting them, to packaging them, to branding and distributing them, to finally selling them in their own brick and mortar stores. This vertical integration is aimed at increasing sales and increasing the margins on said sales. As for the new team at Hybrid Labs, uh, each Red Light Holland and Creso will have three of their own executives sit on the new board, with the Red Light CEO, uh, Todd Shapiro, becoming the Hybrid Lab CEO. Before the news of the merger broke, Red Light Holland also announced that they have acquired a company called Happy Caps Mushroom Farm, or rather they acquired 80% of this company. So Happy Caps Mushroom Farm is a company that grows gourmet mushrooms for sale, and it specializes in grow-at-home mushroom kits. This will give Hybrid an extra revenue source, albeit a small one, and may eventually allow the company to sell do-it-yourself psilocybin mushroom kits, regulations permitting. 
This will help, again, with the vertical integration mentioned above. Taking these developments together, if you're a fan of Red Light, or now Hybrid Labs, then you're probably pretty excited by these moves. The mergers and acquisitions will help Hybrid Labs execute on its mission to become the global leader in providing legal recreational psilocybin, and now also, of course, cannabis projects. However, as I am sure many of my viewers are aware, I personally am skeptical of this model. I think that the real money and safety is found not in the recreational space, but rather the medical applications of psychedelic medicines. I personally just don't see psilocybin becoming legal in most countries anytime soon. And even if states like Oregon and maybe even California set up legal dispensaries, there's still going to be a great risk from it being illegal on a federal level. A change in federal government from one that tolerates states essentially allowing uh, psilocybin to be sold illegally to a hardline anti-drug government could devastate companies working with recreational psilocybin. But I definitely could be wrong here, and I'm sure many of you will claim that down in the comment section, and I'm happy to have a conversation with you guys. To be clear, I'm not hating on hybrid labs here, and I hope they succeed. But just from a personal finance perspective, investing in a company that is working on recreational psilocybin at a time when literally no country is discussing the idea of legalizing the drug for recreational purposes just doesn't seem the safest place to put my money. These compounds do have very real medical applications and regulators like the FDA seem to be 100% on board with using them as medicines. So, from a personal perspective, the option seems to be both safer and have higher reward. This option is, of course, the investing in companies working on psychedelics as medicines and not recreation plays. But again, I could be wrong. This isn't financial advice, and I am not a financial advisor. I'm just telling you guys my own personal opinions, and let me know down in the comments whether you agree with me or disagree with me. And let me know if you like red light, excuse me, Hybrid Labs. Are you an investor in the company? Are you happy with the merger? Why or why not? I want to hear your guys' thoughts. Next up, we're going to be taking a look at Numinous Wellness, ticker symbol LKYSF on the OTC markets, and Numi, N-U-M-I, on the TSX Venture Exchange. And the news that we have for you today is that Numinous Wellness has uplisted to Tier 1 on the TSX Venture Exchange. The main benefit of this uplisting will be that the company has greater access to institutional investors. There is also some reduced regulatory burdens and the company will have improved service standards. For individual retail investors, however, so like me and you, this news doesn't actually mean too much and it won't affect Numinous's long-term chances at success. But it is important because it points to an ongoing trend of institutional money becoming less skeptical of psychedelic medicines and their potential. It seems like every single week we're seeing a story of a psychedelic medicines company either being uplisted to a more prestigious market or at the very least applying to do so. So if you are a numinous investor, this is great news. Not because the company has had any sort of breakthrough or anything like that, but because they are continuing their slow march towards legitimacy. And this, of course, will be needed if we ever hope to see psychedelic medicines be prescribed to treat ailments like depression and anxiety. Next up, we're going to take a look at Mind Medicine, which is, of course, ticker symbol MNMD on the NASDAQ exchange and MMED on the Canadian NEO exchange. The news that we have for you today is that MindMed has appointed a new pharmaceutical veteran, Dr. Peter Burgethon, to their scientific advisory board. Now this is important because this shows that MindMed is continuing to build out its expert scientific team. In order to win the psychedelic medicines arms race, companies will need to attract the best talent in the entire world. And it appears that Dr. Burgethon would be included in that club. MindMed describes him as, quote, a world leading expert in neurology, digital medicine, and central nervous system drug development. And his resume appears to back this description. He is currently the Vice President and Head of Digital and Quantitative Medicine at a company called Biogen Inc. And Biogen Inc. aims to transform the way that clinical trials are run and make medicine more personalized. As we've talked about all the time on this channel, the shift to personalized medicine is both a healthcare-wide trend that will dominate the medical industry over the next decade and is a main goal of MindMeds when it comes to psychedelic medicines. 
So honestly, this seems like a really great fit. Before moving to Biogen, Dr. Burjathon was the vice president and head of Pfizer's Innovation Research Lab, and before that he had 30 plus years of experience in the academic field, being a professor at Boston University among others, and he taught stuff like biochemistry, neurology, neurobiology, anatomy, and biomedical engineering. So Burjathon does appear to be all-star talent, and MindMed is lucky to have him. So major congrats to MindMed team for continuing to attract world-leading talent. Our next story today is looking at Field Trip Health, which is of course FTRPF on the OTC market and FTRP on the TSX. The news that we have is that Field Trip will release their quarterly financial results for the fiscal fourth quarter and full year 2021, which for them ends on March 31st, 2021, for some reason. And they're going to be doing this after the market close on Thursday, June 24th. So the most important thing here, the most important details that will be released here will be how much cash on hand Field Trip has and what its cash burn rate is. This will tell us investors for how long the company can sustain itself with no or very little revenue before it has to raise more capital and further dilute itself. The company already raised $95 million USD in March, so they should be set for a couple of years, but getting an update is always nice. Much more important for investors, however, will be the conference call that the company is holding the next day on Friday, June 25th at 8 a.m. Eastern Time. During these calls, we always get updates on the progress of the company, and often we get great insights that we frankly just don't get anywhere else. So if you're an investor in Field Trip, or if you're considering making an investment, I would highly suggest listening to this call. Let me know down in the comments if you bought a tie and if you're happy with the red light haul and merger. I want to know your guys' opinions. It really does help us create the content going forward. Also a reminder guys, I am not a financial advisor. I'm just a retail investor like you who is sharing his own opinions on this. Always do your own due diligence and any stocks before you buy. And while you're at it, check out the Atai video on their IPO and the deep dive. It should be on your screen now. So go check that out. It's a great video and peace and love guys. I'll see you next time.